Um, so we're going to talk about how Constellation and an individual uh, would build an ecosystem to support what they're doing on uh, on blockchain. Um, please, if we can jump on to the next slide, and I think we'll just go straight through it. We've got, I've got 20 minutes, I think, haven't I? So um, Constellation Network, I'll speak to it in a moment on the next slide, who we are and what we do. But what I'm going to talk to you about over the next 20 minutes is myself as a client, individually, initially, of DigitalOcean, and then as part of Constellation, who I subsequently joined, um, Constellation is a partner and a customer of DigitalOcean. And I individually am a partner and a customer of Constellation, uh, of DigitalOcean. And I'll explain that in a second. I will go th quite quickly through this because I just have 20 minutes. Uh, but of course, this is being recorded, so you'll be able to see it afterwards, I'm sure. Uh, so first of all, quick introduction to Constellation uh, and what we do. So you're here because you are blockchain aware, um, speaking about blockchain and how the, the, the protocols have evolved over time. Blockchain 1.0 is what I and most of us would refer to as the, as the Bitcoin type of protocol. Uh, that was proof of concept of a, di a distributed ledger technology. It's a proof of work uh, protocol. And the transactions on Bitcoin, uh, Bitcoin's blockchain, represent the transfer of value, uh, the coin of Bitcoin. Uh, blockchain 2.0, the next evolution or the next substantial step uh, is the Ethereum uh, ecosystem that provided for smart contracts being able to code um, contracts within the blockchain, uh, which then enabled decentralized finance, DeFi and decentralized apps. Um, it's still a proof of work, uh, but it's migrating towards proof of stake in time. Um, now, both of these types of chains are, both these types of networks are linear blockchains. That therefore means that there is a capacity limit. Each block on the network uh, has a start moment, an end moment, and a limited number of transactions that can fit into that block. Now, yes, there's going to be sharding and there is sharding on certain networks already, um, but there are a limited number of um, consensus transactions that can be recorded on each block. In certain circumstances, uh, we saw last week with uh, Board 80 Block Clubs um, uh, minting, that can create a significant congestion. Uh, as there is congestion, there is a battle to get your particular transaction recorded on a particular block. And because it's proof of work, the network participants are therefore incentivized for um, recording your transaction in that block uh, and to do so you have to pay a higher gas fee. Um, gas fees, if you're battling to get your um, transaction recorded in a block and someone overtakes you with a higher gas fee, your transaction might fail. So there are issues with, um, with this type of protocol and that's one of the reasons that Ethereum is looking at proof of stake, but it's also one of the problems of effectively a blockchain 2.0 type of technology. If we can move to the next slide, please. Tim, very quickly, I was told your video wasn't showing. Uh, OK, let me see if I can fix that somehow. Um, I do beg your pardon. I'm using a uh, fantastic app called Reincubate Cam Camo, but obviously it's not working so well at the moment. Um, okay. Fine. Stop video and start video again. Maybe that will fix it. So what is, uh, I'll, I'll carry on trying to fix that video while we're in it. No um, what is the, uh, the evolution that we're looking at? So Constellation, um, many of you will have heard of what's called the trilemma. Uh, this is the, um, the zero sum game effectively of decentralization, security and scalability. Um, which one of those has to be sacrificed in order to maximize uh, the, the impact of the other two. Now, um, that's been blockchains, bet noir and goal uh, since blockchain began. Um, what we look to do at Constellation is, and we've designed and, and, it, and, and it's, it's up and running, is a completely different type of network, which is a directed acyclic graph. Uh, there are a number of other uh, DAGs uh, already uh, implemented and out there. Uh, so we're not the first at all. Uh, we just think we've got the, the opportunity to be one of the best. Um, and what that does is if you consider 
a um, a linear blockchain, but then contemplate a I usually refer to a DNA uh, strand, DNA helix. So a DNA helix, uh, effectively, you think about the core and then strands of chromosomes uh, around the outside. Um, if, if that was to be the case, then you can effectively imagine that you can add more DNA strands and chromosome strands around the outside of the core, uh, and that increases capacity. It's a 3D network, basically. Um, so I try to contemplate that, con consider a directed acyclic graph as a 3D network of nodes, which we've, we've heard about a bit already, and the arcs, the connectivity between the nodes. What that does, it gives us the ability to have, uh, so I just jump back a little bit more. There are two other elements beyond the trilemma, which is composability and interoperability. Composability is moving around components of a network to make it more effective and efficient. Interoperability means that there's communication between different data types. Thank you. And I do apologize, I can see myself on video, but you can't, uh, so I've got the bad short straw here. Um, why do we do this? So we're looking forward to um, more data. I mean, you, you, you've all seen the um, statistics on the amount of data generated every year being uh, exponentially greater than previous years and so on. 90% um, of the world's data has been created in the last five years, all that sort of stuff. Internet of Things, Web 3.0 and AI is only going to increase this. So Constellation um, allows for infinite scalability um, because you can just add more nodes to the network. Uh, because think of it in 3D, they don't need to be linear. The whole uh, network does not keep a copy of the whole ledger. So each node does not have to have and hold a copy of the DLT like uh, standard linear blockchains generally do. Um, we have sub-networks uh, which will achieve consensus and then they can communicate to the network as a whole that they have achieved consensus. That allows us to have near instantaneous uh, transactions uh, and near feeless consensus confirmation. Um, our snapshot windows are currently 12 seconds. Each node is, uh, is permitted to have a feeless um, transaction consensus within that snapshot, but actors on the network can purchase more bandwidth uh, with a DAG token, uh, which I'll come on to in a, in a second. Um, we have a proof of reputable observation consensus model. It doesn't require work doesn't therefore demand excessive computing power. The bigger and stronger your computer does not mean that you are more powerful on the network and will earn more rewards. That's an essential for our model with DigitalOcean. Um, and it can connect to all data types. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, a little bit about myself. Uh, my handle is T1MOB. Uh, you'll find me there on LinkedIn, on Twitter, on Telegram. Okay, I'm, I've been crypto curious till 2021 and then became crypto certain early last year. Uh, I'm a bit of an old guy. If you saw me, you'd see what? Um, I'm, I'm 50. Uh, I was in the British Army for a number of years. Then I was an investment banker uh, with UBS in New York, San Francisco, and London. I was a tech banker in uh, Web 1.0 in Silicon Valley in 2001, 2002. So I've been exposed to the type of energy that uh, comes out of Silicon Valley. Uh, I've worked in risk management, fraud investigation, aid, um, and I've been an entrepreneur myself. I'm, most of all, though, I'm saying I'm familiar with the unfamiliar. Uh, I'm happy in areas that are new to me. So I joined the ecosystem last year, the Constellation ecosystem, uh, as a community governance rep. Uh, I was invited to build a node first in testnet mode and then to join the network that are on mainnet 1.0. Um, and I then was asked to support projects just as a sort of a, a sort of hand-holding mentor as they were preparing to build on Constellation. So I did that. Separately, I founded a business called Node Army in 2021, last, in March 2021. I'll explain that in a second. Um, out of those two processes, I was asked by Constellation to join them in uh, November last year as Director of Ecosystem Growth. I run our business incubator and accelerator program. Uh, and look to build the ecosystem through partnerships and, uh, and, and affiliations. We can jump onto that. Okay, a blockchain ecosystem, what is it? Um, Boston Consulting Group, 
um, put together a, a nice bit of analysis called what does a successful digital ecosystem look like? It's still valid, a couple of years old now. Um, we've got a bit of our cloud of ecosystem partners on the right hand side, uh, but BCG would say a fast start isn't enough. It's not just first move advantage. You have to have a strong user base. You need to have a deep bunch of partners. It needs to be scalable, big global footprint already. And you've got to allow for collaboration because your ecosystem is only going to grow through collaboration. The things to remember are decentralization. Uh, a blockchain is all about decentralization. It's all about granting self-sovereignty, even if that's self-sovereignty to a corporation rather than the individual. Um, but it's about self-sovereignty. It's not relying on a, uh, a third party. Yeah, you, you've, you've got your own um, individualization. Uh, datapreneurship is, this is where the, um, the ability to effectively monetize your own data, this is what Web 3.0 is all about. It's making you the actor in a um, financial e ecosystem. Uh, so that's always some, got to be something in the back of our minds in, in ecosystem growth. In the next slide, please. Um, how do we develop it? Um, so building an ecosystem is all about grow, improve, control, and monetize. There's nothing new in this slide. This is um, business school 101 kind of stuff. But when we apply it to what we do uh, in a digital system, um, the grow and improve effectively becomes the build phase. Um, because you're constantly testing. You're designing and building to begin with um, in, in sandboxes and so on, and then we're looking to improve. Control is not necessarily directly applicable in blockchain because we're, we're, we're decentralized, um, but we are putting in governance protocols and making sure that they're robust. Normally then, uh, an ecosystem looks to monetize, um, and I'll explain that in a second. So that grow, improve, control is often powered and the ecosystem growth is powered by competition. Uh, that's cooperative competition for those that uh, like me on um, been to business school themselves. Um, and it's powered by the network effect. Uh, the bigger the network, uh, the more participants, the greater the value of its parts. Um, usually to monetize uh, on the right hand side, an orchestrator such as Constellation in this case, we'd look to increase fees, encourage competition, compete themselves. Um, we don't do that because the DAG token is the unit token of data transfer. So as the orchestrator, if we're going to use formal terms no. of Constellation ecosystem, Constellation <laughs> as a business, no. yeah, but... we just need to encourage more participation and adoption because participation yeah. and adoption increases the number of the amount of data that benefits all the ecosystem participants. Hi Tim, did we lose you? Yes, yeah, sorry, the next slide please Mohan. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Um, Constellation is a layer zero network. Uh, that means we're cross-chain interoperable. That's how it's been built. Uh, we don't therefore look to compete with other networks, but we can empower them. Uh, we can make other networks, let's say Bitcoin, uh, Ethereum, all others, we can make them better, faster, cheaper, and more energy efficient because we can interact with them. They can uh, interact with each other um, and, and we can effectively give them the benefit of our faster, cheaper, more energy efficient network. New projects can, though, just build natively on Constellation if they wish. Um, we are an open ecosystem, but actually that also allows other blockchain ecosystems to become more open too. Um, one of our clients is the, is the Department of Defense, by the way, in the US. Uh, so our level of security uh, is, um, is acceptable to the US Department of Defense. So it's as high as you can imagine it would need to be for that. Feel is infinitely scalable, near instantaneous and interoperable other than that. And then the next slide. Okay, nodes. Um, so Hypergraph Mainnet was launched in April 2020. We use nodes. Those nodes confer consensus on transactions. A, n a minimum of three nodes constitutes a state channel. Um, this is what, what I'm described as a sub network earlier. They can achieve consensus on the transactions that are either delegated to them or that they own within their sub network. They then confirm to the whole network that they've achieved consensus. So the whole network doesn't have a copy of the entire ledger. Um, effectively, if you can imagine um, 
a on the back of a book you have a synopsis of the book that synopsis of the book is what goes into the whole network not the whole book um, we can manage simultaneous consensus processes because it's not a linear blockchain uh, and that results in no capacity limits and therefore no upward pressure on fees and then the next slide please the reward model uh, it's not proof of work it's not proof of stake but it's a threshold of 250,000 DAG to persuade bad actors that needs to be in the node wallet um, and then validate the nodes earn rewards according to their behavior on the network and their reputation each node can validate a transaction per second beyond that the DAG token when I first drafted this, it was a little bit different before the bloodbath that we've had in the last few days. Uh, but the DAG token is currently trading at 12 cents, and that will purchase 100 million transactions of bandwidth. So you can see the difference in gas fees, if you want to call them gas fees, basically. Uh, the transaction fee, we call it near fee-less because 100 million transactions for 12 cents. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, it's all about the notes. Next slide. Okay. On the left-hand side is a little bit of our mainnet 1.0 uh, description of how to set up a node. Um, and the virtual machine requirements, Ubuntu 18.04, mainnet 2.0 is going to be 20.04, uh, 8 gigs of RAM and 100 gigs of disk space. Looking across at the uh, typical droplet that you would see on DigitalOcean, that therefore means we can have a shared CPU on the basic plan, um, the Ubuntu distribution, and that gives us, if we're looking for eight gigs, 100 uh, gigs, 100 gigs of uh, disk space, that's a $40 a month uh, virtual machine. Incredibly good value to build and run a node. Next slide, please. Okay, this is a, a little bit about my experience in a decentralized ecosystem, uh, building nodes. Next slide. So I joined the DAG community, as I said, in 2021. Uh, I'd never used Linux or Ubuntu or the command line before. That is no exaggeration. I was a complete noob when it came to Linux. Um, I was asked to build a node on testnet as part of the governance council um, and to join mainnet 1.0. That was essential for me in order to understand how the protocol works and, 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 uh, and the challenges of operating a node. I followed written instructions. You just saw the beginning of that on the left-hand side of the previous screen. That took me many, many weeks. Um, I tried DigitalOcean, Vulture, Linode, AWS, Google Cloud Compute. Um, and I'll, I'll continue to refer to sort of cloud computing as those typical five. Of course, I love DigitalOcean. But for decentralization, uh, we need to ensure that uh, there are other alternatives and other options. But DigitalOcean are themselves decentralized. And I'll explain that in a second. Um, I wasn't alone in this in terms of the, my failure. There is a technical competency barrier to entry in operating nodes, building a node. Uh, part of this, I think, is by design because those people that have um, been, if you like, uh, the original gangsters of blockchain, um, it, it started off as hobbyists, didn't it? Um, uh, cypherpunks and so on. And the idea of not wanting um, people who've not done the hard yards to be able to get into the network. Now that's um, a massive cultural change that is happening across blockchain at the moment because um, the barriers to entry are dropping everywhere. Um, and we also need to drop barriers to entry in terms of the technical ability to operate a node on a network. Um, I built a, a node, I destroyed it, I rebuilt it. I must have done 120. Uh, node builds. Um, I could then eventually do it blindfolded. And I began to wonder what to do with this. Then next slide. 95% um, of the build of a typical node on Constellation Network and indeed many other chains of nodes is common. Uh, the, uh, the last 5% is connecting to a wallet, uh, adding user ID, password, IP address. So what I did is I took snapshots of my droplet during the build and realized that I could send it to other members of the ecosystem uh, who were struggling like I had been in my technical ability to build a node. And I could say, look, 95% of the work is done. All you have to do is, uh, on the Constellation protocol, is DAG update as a script command. And you'll be asked to connect your wallet, uh, enter a password, set your IP address, so on. So that gave people the ability to very, very easily um, downscale and minimize the amount of work that they needed to do to build the node. 
So I realized I could do this and I joined Digital Nation Marketplace uh, as a one-click app, registered as a vendor, did the same with uh, with Vulture, Linode and so on, um, but particularly on DigitalOcean. I branded this, it's Node Army, it's up there and it's out and about, by all means have a look. Um, a hun hundreds of prospective node operators on Constellation downloaded the app, have built a node and, it, and either um, joined the mainnet because they had invitations as validators, joined the testnet, or have um, frozen their, uh, their droplet or destroyed their droplet with a snapshot ready to reanimate when the whitelist drops and our mainnet two goes live, which is uh, in a matter of uh, well, weeks now. Um, this has hugely reduced their tech barrier to entry. It's grown the ecosystem and beautifully DigitalOcean, in order for me to upload a, um, a one-click app to the DigitalOcean marketplace, DigitalOcean have automated security audits of the um, uh, of the build that I've put in as a snapshot. So it it's if you're someone looking to download a one-click app from the hosted marketplace, you can have a level of assurance that there's nothing dodgy in there that I've or anyone else has put into those um, one-click apps. Um, what this has meant is that Constellation, for example, or any other network that um, operates on DigitalOcean Marketplace, which certainly Node Army is going to be building many, many more um, protocols and templates. It allows for the instant scalability, rapid deployment of, of further nodes. Um, it allows for decentralization and democratization. This is key. And I mentioned that it's good to have uh, lots of different cloud computing providers, but within those cloud computing providers, uh, DigitalOcean provides for individual um, accounts. So just because someone has taken a template uh, and is building a, uh, a node on Constellation, for example, maybe using the Node Army template, they're using it in their own individual account, uh, which is, of course, uh, distributed across uh, the various different um, uh, cloud locations uh, and server farms, if that's the wrong word, probably, that DigitalOcean operate. And as DigitalOcean grow, they'll operate in, in many, many other countries and any other, many other locations. So that democratizes and decentralizes uh, the, the deployment. It's secure. There are many different security tools on DigitalOcean that you'll come across. Uh, and of course, it has that audit as well. Uh, interestingly, though, um, the nodes become transferable between DigitalOcean accounts as well, which op opens up a whole new marketplace opportunity and datapreneurship opportunity for node operators. And then the next slide, please. The outcome. The outcome I found was that, first of all, using DigitalOcean, uh, I can monitor the droplets. Uh, the whole ecosystem can monitor droplets and have alerts for downtime. I get the occasional, very, very occasional, very well, um, <laughs> well written and polite uh, notification of DigitalOcean telling me that there's going to be some downtime, how long it's going to be. Uh, what will happen to my droplet during the downtime. And it's only happened twice in a year that that's ever happened. Most of the time, um, I'm going into my, my virtual machine, doing my updates, giving myself a reboot. Um, snapshots are a fantastic tool on DigitalOcean. They allow for, um, for cloning of, uh, of builds, as I have done, at the 95% uh, functionality. It uh, allows you to go, you know what, I'm, I'm going to go back to the uh, state I was in before, uh, do a rollback. Yes, backups. Um, you can manage team access on your DigitalOcean uh, droplet management, and that also provides for an audit trail of knowing who went into the machine and when and what they did. Uh, Two-factor authentication is vital, locking down your security, managing your costs, cost alerts, uh, and so on, but also putting in multiple different ways of paying for it, just in case one of your credit cards uh, expires. You don't want to discover that on, a, on any subscription service anywhere that your account has been uh, put into collections or is in suspension because you, you're at your... Your direct debit's out of date, or your company credit card is out of date, because then you might not be live on the net, on the network that you meant to be. But DigitalOcean, from our experience, absolutely built for business growth and scaling. Um, now, was that my last slide, or have I got another one on there? I do beg your pardon. Yes, looking to the future. Another slide. I beg your pardon. So, in terms of future builds, uh, the future growth of Constellation's ecosystem, but also when I look at the type of uh, blockchain that Constellation represents. Um, and, and where the blockchain sector is going to be going. It's going to be more nodes, more node types, light nodes, um, edge computing, uh, 
uh, type nodes. Um, fractional nodes, nodes as a service, uh, this is where organizations will, um, will provide nodes on your behalf to networks. Uh, these are not virtual nodes. Uh, there are virtual nodes that you will see, and if you do a search for blockchain nodes, 9 out of 10 will be um, effectively DeFi plays, where uh, you are looking to subscribe to a number of tokens in order to have a inverted commas node on a network. It's not a real node. It's, uh, it's a participation in a decentralized finance um, or, uh, protocol where the number of tokens that you have used to buy your entry into the node, X percent of those are used to pay rewards to existing members on the network. And then subsequent joiners to the network will be paying an entry point and you receive your rewards based out of that. That is a very, very different type of uh, node in inverted commas um, consideration. That's not what we do. That's not what nodes are going to be in the future. Nodes in the future will be um, distributed and decentralized computing uh, within a network, providing um, com um, cloud computing on a blockchain network and recording consensus and transactions. That's what they are, will be. Nodes as an asset class, because nodes will be tradable. They already are. Um, I've shared nodes from user to user uh, as a, a proof of concept. Uh, it can be done. The node economy, um, as nodes become more uh, prevalent and um, accessible, coming back to accessibility and democratization of uh, participation in blockchain networks, as uh, you don't need um, proof of work, you don't need uh, a massive proof of stake, the bigger your stake doesn't give you a, a greater act, uh, uh, power on a network. This will continue to democratize participation in decentralized networks. So the node economy will become a thing. Stability is vital. Confidence, governance, and transparency will remain vital. Um, audits, security, scalability, decentralization, and data entrepreneurship. All of these are absolutely empowered by DigitalOcean. When I first spoke with DigitalOcean as a potential vendor, um, one of the things I was very keen to do was to show all of the graphs of the performance of the virtual machine hosted on DigitalOcean servers. And DigitalOcean were able to see there are, that a Constellation node, for example, uh, that isn't proof of work, does not put massive demands on the computing power. Um, once I was able to show that to DigitalOcean, they could see that um, operating blockchain nodes on DigitalOcean was something that they were willing to support. And boy, have we um, achieved a great deal together. Uh, DigitalOcean uh, sponsors the, and is a partner in the accelerator program that Constellation runs. Uh, we encourage um, our participants in the accelerator program to operate with DigitalOcean, to learn about them, to find out about all the different and dispersed um, cloud computing services that are provided and the services that support the cloud computing services because there are so many and they all interact with each other. Um, we've absolutely uh, can see what DigitalOcean is doing in the future um, and we are building a, um, a really, what, what I see is a fantastic um, ecosystem at Constellation that currently has just over 100 uh, validator nodes on mainnet one. Uh, and we have 5,700 um, effectively expressions of interest to run a node uh, for mainnet 2.0. We don't know how many of those will convert to actually running nodes, how many of them will decide to stake their tokens to provide bandwidth for the, the blockchain, the, uh, the network as a whole. Um, but we know that many thousands of potential node operators are going to be looking around to um, cloud computing solutions to see how they will build their node. And I know that um, DigitalOcean are going to be a massive support in that, and I'm sure we'll, we'll receive an awful lot of uptake. Um, I'm going to stick around in case there are any questions, um, but I'd encourage you to, to learn about DAG, decentralized, sorry, uh, directed acyclic graphs, uh, as part of the, uh, the, the DLT and as part of the, the next generation of blockchains. Uh, I apologize for no video. It's probably for the best 
if I'm really honest. Uh, you can see the picture there. Um, but thank you for for the time, DigitalOcean. Um, thank you for for hosting me, Mohan. Uh, and I'll stick around for any any questions. But as I wanted to say, I've been an individual partner and customer of DigitalOcean, um, and now at Constellation, uh, we are a partner, a customer, and DigitalOcean is very much part of our ecosystem um, because we are scalable with you.